हेलो दोस्तों वेलकम टू लिखो स्टैनो एकेडमी दोस्तों आप चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर सकते हैं डेली डिक्टेशंस के लिए और अपने फ्रेंड्स में इसे रेकमेंड कर सकते हैं आज मैं आपको ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन की डिक्टेशन देने वाला हूं जैसे कि हम तीन डिफरेंट स्पीड पे करते हैं पहले सेवेंटी वर्ड पर मिनट देन एटी फाइव पर मिनट और फिर उसके बाद वन हंड्रेड पर मिनट पर सो so, सबसे पहले आपको डिक्टेशन दे रहा हूँ सेवेंटी वर्ड पर मिनट में सो बी रेडी फॉर इट If you scan the history of the railways in this country, you will see that it was the presidency towns Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta that determined the pattern of our railways. as well as of our industrial and economic growth the british when they landed in this country established trading centers called forts in madras it was fort st george in calcutta it was fort st williams and in bombay it was merely a fort and there was one in surat also it is these trading establishments which determined the pattern of government the pattern of administration and every other pattern under the british regime they constructed the railways they established the industries they located their armies with reference to these three presidency towns this idea of the presidency towns determining the pattern of our social structure industrial advancement and the system of our railways still persists that is the mental lag that is hampering the vision of the planning commission the railway board and the railway ministry sir once i happened to travel from london to rome by train another time i had to travel from moscow to leningrad by train nowhere did i find on the continent of europe lines of varying breadth it is all a uniform gauge so is it in russia it may be 6 feet there in america in every industrially advanced country you find that the gauge is uniform this very country which ruled us namely the united kingdom had inside its border a uniform gauge but they inflicted three systems of gauge on india they thought that that would perpetuate what is called their domination or in the negative sense that it would impede the industrial and 
economic growth of india secondly it would make india always the customer and purchaser of lines and locomotives and rolling stock from the united kingdom in the old days i am told it is the government which built the broad gauge line and it is the private companies that took to this meter gauge and the narrow gauge though they may not have had the distinction of private and public sector in view then it now appears that what the so called public sector then did has been good and what the private sector then did has been to our disadvantage i would appeal to these agencies to introduce a uniform gauge throughout india in this connection it will be interesting to note the talk of the honorable railway minister about the schools primary schools higher secondary schools and high schools for the indian railways if you examine the previous speech of the railway minister and also the working report of the railway board you will find that the same figure is repeated every year i have examined the figures and i find that this year only 16 schools have been added out of which 13 are primary schools one is a higher secondary school and two are middle or high schools instead of saying that they have been able only to provide 13 primary schools or one or two more high schools or higher secondary schools the same figures are repeated in the speech although the railway board has all along been saying that education is the responsibility of the state and therefore the railway board does not own this responsibility i would like to remind the railway minister about the agreement reached between the national federation of railway men and the railway board in the year 1955 according to which the railway board undertook to provide primary schools for the education of the children of railway employees sir as i told you earlier i had to say many things on the floor of this house but i will conclude with only one or two more observations i will first deal with the labor relations on the indian railways 
I slightly differ from my honorable friend when he quoted me as saying that the permanent negotiating machinery has completely failed. It is a fact that this machinery is not functioning satisfactorily. At certain places, it has failed. There is no doubt about it. But I would say in this house, most frankly, that at the board's level, this machinery has been working successfully. But this is not the position so far as the zonal railways are concerned. I do not say that in all the zonal railways it is so, but in certain zonal railways and in most of the divisions of these railways it has failed. I was expecting that the railway minister would examine the working of this machinery in all the railways. What is the greatest defect in this machinery? This machinery suffers to the extent that at the board level if there is difference of opinion between the railway board and the railway labor no arbitration machinery is provided to settle the disputes so dosto ye thi dictation 70 word per minute per ab main next dictation aapko dunga 85 word per minute per so be ready for that if you scan the history of the railways in this country you will see that it was the presidency towns bombay madras and calcutta that determined the pattern of our railways as well as of our industrial and economic growth the british when they landed in this country established trading centers called forts in madras it was fort st george in calcutta it was fort st williams and in bombay it was merely a fort and there was one in surat also it is these trading establishments which determined the pattern of government the pattern of administration and every other pattern under the british regime they constructed the railways they established the industries they located their armies with reference to these three presidency towns this idea of the presidency towns determining the pattern of our social structure industrial advancement and the system of our railways still persists that is the mental lag that is hampering the vision of the planning commission the railway board and the railway ministry sir once i happened to travel from london to rome by train another time i had to travel from moscow to leningrad by train nowhere did i find on the continent of europe lines of varying breadth it is all 
a uniform gauge so is it in russia it may be 6 feet there in america in every industrially advanced country you find that the gauge is uniform this very country which ruled us namely the united kingdom had inside its border a uniform gauge but they inflicted three systems of gauge on india they ought that that would perpetuate what is called their domination or in the negative sense that it would impede the industrial and economic growth of india secondly it would make india always the customer and purchaser of lines and locomotives and rolling stock from the united kingdom in the old days i am told it is the government which built the broad gauge line and it is the private companies that took to this meter gauge and the narrow gauge though they may not have had the distinction of private and public sector in view then it now appears that what the so called public sector then did has been good and what the private sector then did has been to our disadvantage i would appeal to these agencies to introduce a uniform gauge throughout india in this connection it will be interesting to note the talk of the honorable railway minister about the schools primary schools higher secondary schools and high schools for the indian railways if you examine the previous speech of the railway minister and also the working report of the railway board you will find that the same figure is repeated every year i have examined the figures and i find that this year only 16 schools have been added out of which 13 are primary schools one is a higher secondary school and two are middle or high schools instead of saying that they have been able only to provide 13 primary schools or one or two more high schools or higher secondary schools the same figures are repeated in the speech although the railway board has all along been saying that education is the responsibility of the state and therefore the railway board does not own this responsibility i would like to remind the railway minister about the agreement reached between the national federation of railway men and the railway board in the year 1955 according to which the railway board undertook to provide primary schools for the education of the children of railway employees sir as i told you earlier i had to say many things on the floor of this house but i will conclude with only one or two more observations i will first deal with the labor relations on the indian railways 
I slightly differ from my honorable friend when he quoted me as saying that the permanent negotiating machinery has completely failed. It is a fact that this machinery is not functioning satisfactorily. At certain places it has failed. There is no doubt about it. But I would say in this house most frankly that at the board's level this machinery has been working successfully. But this is not the position so far as the zonal railways are concerned. I do not say that in all the zonal railways it is so but in certain zonal railways and in most of the divisions of these railways it has failed. I was expecting that the railway minister would examine the working of this machinery in all the railways. What is the greatest defect in this machinery? This machinery suffers to the extent that at the board level if there is difference of opinion between the railway board and the railway labor no arbitration machinery is provided to settle the disputes. So, दोस्तों ये थी 85 वर्ड पर मिनट पर डिक्टेशन और अब मैं आज की फाइनल डिक्टेशन आपको दूंगा 105 वर्ड पर मिनट पर सो बी रेडी फॉर इट इफ यू स्कैन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द रेलवेज इन दिस कंट्री यू विल सी दैट इट वॉज द प्रेजिडेंसी टाउन बॉम्बे मेड्रास एंड कैलकाटा दैट डिटरमाइन द पैटर्न of our railways as well as of our industrial and economic growth. The British when they landed in this country established trading centers called forts. In Madras it was Fort St. George, in Calcutta it was Fort St. Williams and in Bombay it was merely a fort and there was one in Surat also. It is these trading establishments which determined the pattern of government, the pattern of administration and every other pattern under the British regime. They constructed the railways, they established the industries, they located their armies with reference to these three presidency towns. This idea of the presidency towns determining the pattern of our social structure, industrial advancement and the system of our railways still persists. That is the mental lag that is hampering the vision of the planning commission, the railway board and the railway ministry. Sir, once I happened to travel from London to Rome by train. Another time, I had to travel from Moscow to Leningrad by train. Nowhere did I find on the continent of Europe lines of wearing bread. It is all a uniform gauge. So is it in Russia? It may be six feet there. In America, in every industrially advanced country, you will find that the gauge is uniform. This very country which ruled us namely the United Kingdom had inside its border a uniform gauge but they inflicted three systems of gauge on India. They thought that that would perpetuate what is called their domination or in the negative sense that it would impede the industrial and economic growth of India. Secondly, it would make India always 
द कस्टमर एंड परचेजर ऑफ लाइन्स एंड लोकोमोटिव्स एंड रोलिंग स्टॉक फ्रॉम द यूनाइटेड किंगडम इन द ओल्ड डेज आई एम टोल्ड इट इज़ द गवर्नमेंट विच बिल्ट द ब्रॉड गेज लाइन एंड इट इज़ द प्राइवेट कंपनीज दैट टुक टू दिस मीटर गेज एंड द नैरो गेज दो दे मे नॉट हैव हैड द डिस्टिंगशन ऑफ प्राइवेट एंड पब्लिक सेक्टर इन व्यू देन इट नाउ अपीयर्स दैट वट द सो कॉल्ड पब्लिक सेक्टर देन डिड हैज़ बीन गुड एंड वट द प्राइवेट सेक्टर देन डिड हैज़ बीन टू अवर डिसएडवाटेज I would appeal to these agencies to introduce a uniform gauge throughout India. In this connection, it will be interesting to note the talk of the Honorable Railway Minister about the schools, primary schools, higher secondary schools, and high schools for the Indian Railways. If you examine the previous speech of the Railway Minister. and also the working report of the railway board you will find that the same figure is repeated every year i have examined the figures and i find that this year only 16 schools have been added out of which 13 are primary schools one is a higher secondary school and two are middle or high schools instead of saying that they have been able only to provide 13 primary schools or one or two more high schools or higher secondary schools the same figures are repeated in the speech although the railway board has all along been saying that education is the responsibility of the state and therefore the railway board does not own this responsibility i would like to remind the railway minister about the agreement reached between the national federation of railway men and the railway board in the year 1955 according to which the railway board undertook to provide primary schools for the education of the children of railway employees sir as i told you earlier i had to say many things on the floor of this house but i will conclude with only one or two more observations i will first deal with the labor relations on the indian railways i slightly differ from my my honorable friend when he quoted me as saying that the permanent negotiating machinery has completely failed it is a fact that this machinery is not functioning satisfactorily at certain places it has failed there is no doubt about it but i would say in this house most frankly that at the board's level this machinery has been working successfully but this is not the position so far as the zonal railways are concerned i do not see that in all the zonal railways it is so but in certain zonal railways and in most of the divisions of these railways it has failed i was expecting that the railway minister would examine the working of this machinery in all the railways what is the greatest defect in this machinery this machinery suffers to the extent that at the board level if there is difference of opinion between the railway board and the railway labor no arbitration machinery is provided to settle the disputes तो दोस्तों ये थी आज की तीनों डिक्टेशन 70 वर्ड पर मिनट 85 एंड 105 वर्ड पर मिनट पर मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है आप लोगों ने अच्छे से लिखा होगा और जैसा कि मुझे रिस्पांस मिल रहा है आप लोगों का कि आप रेगुलरली डिक्टेशन ले रहे हैं तो बहुत अच्छा लगता है ये देख के और 
मेरा भी पूरा कोशिश रहती है कि और अच्छी मेहनत करूँ आपको अच्छे से अच्छी डिक्टेशन देने की मैं कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि आपको जी डी से भी डिक्टेशन प्रोवाइड करूँ और जैसे जैसे टाइम आगे बढ़ेगा मैं अदर मैगजीन से भी आपको डिक्टेशन दूँगा बट फर्स्ट हमारी कोशिश यही है कि कैलाश चंद्र की जितनी मैगजीन हैं जितनी ज़्यादा कवर हो सके उतना अच्छा है स्किल टेस्ट तक उसके अलावा भी स्किल टेस्ट के बाद भी मैं ये डिक्टेशन देना जारी रखूँगा क्योंकि मैंने जैसे पहले ही कहा है कि मैं कैलाश चंद्र की ट्वेंटी फोर मैगजीन कवर करूँगा जितनी भी इसमें ट्रांसक्रिप्शन हैं सो so, आप अपनी क्लास जारी रखिए स्किल टेस्ट में आपको सक्सेस ज़रूर मिलेगी और अब मैं आपसे मुलाकात करूँगा ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर थर्टी के साथ तब तक के लिए अच्छी स्टैनो लिखें एंड लिखो स्टैनो बाय बाय